To God be the glory <laughs> for the things he's done, <laughs> for the things he's done, for the things he's kept us from, for the things he's kept from us. Hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the things that he has done in our lives. Hallelujah. 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 God, you are worthy of our worship. You are indeed the everlasting God. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. Bless your wonderful name, Jesus. Bless your wonderful name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a worship in the room. I hope y'all get in on this this morning. Hallelujah. We've been worshiping since about, since about 10.05. <laughs> I hope y'all get some of this this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Here we go. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will wait on you. And I will trust in you. I will trust in you. The Lord, the, the Lord, Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is the my Lord is my yeah. light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Come on, go back to the top. Come on, go back to the top. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I I will wait on you. I will wait on you. I will wait on you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. One more time for the heck of it. I will wait on 
goodness, I will see the goodness of the Lord. Yeah. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I shall remain. I will remain confident. confident in this. I will, I will see yeah. the goodness of the Lord. Oh. This morning, I will, I will remain confident in this. Confident in I will this. see, I will yeah. see the goodness oh, of the Lord. I will remain. And 
a Baptist moment right there. <laughs> I love it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is great. And he is greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. He is greatly to be praised. I'm going to ask a question. I want an honest answer. Just real quick. I want an honest answer. How many of you believe God owes you something? Is it just me? If God made us a promise, so is it, let me try again. If God, and, the, and the Bible is full of promises with yeses and amens, am I right? So if God made you a promise, and since he is God and he cannot lie, what that means is, if he made you a promise, and it hasn't come to fruition yet, somebody help me. That means God owes us something. That, come on, ain't nothing wrong with that. That's scripture. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! That was good to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. So listen, if God made you a promise and you are waiting faithfully, 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 not just waiting with God, what you going to do now? No, if you are waiting faithfully for God to fulfill that promise, we got good news for you today. Three words. God is able. <laughs> Hallelujah. So let me ask again. <laughs> So let me ask again, how many of y'all in this room and on live feel like God owes you something? <laughs> Amen. And if he don't, that's all right. If he don't, if he's come through for you, to God be the glory for all the things. I'm done on it. Hallelujah. God is able. Don't mess it up, Reggie. Don't mess it up. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what you can ask or even imagine, according to the power <laughs> that works. <laughs> That's the part everybody misses. Now, I know we got to sing. That's the part everybody misses. It says, according to the power that works in me. <laughs> Thank 
you, God. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ask or think, according to the power that worketh in you. to do just what he said he would do. There's your promise right there. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. He's able. I got any witnesses in the house? Shout. He's able. 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 He's able.
don't give up on God. <laughs> don't sell yourself short. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't give up. Listen, I don't care. I don't care how long you've been waiting. A year, a, a day is but a, a thousand years in the sight of the Lord. So your 10 years is about 15 minutes in God's time. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. One more time, don't give up on, don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Come on and bless the Lord in this place. Come on and bless What you been waiting on? Shantae, what you been waiting on? Kirk, what you been waiting on? Ryan, what you been waiting on? First Lady, what you been waiting on? Rich, what you been, Pastor, what you been waiting on? He's able, he's able, he's able. Tanisha, he's able. He is able, he's able, he is able. He's able, he's able. He's able. He's able. as he was prophesying that you're going to make it through it and that whatever you stand in need of it's already done do I got a few witnesses to touch and agree that he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think hallelujah thank you God thank you God hallelujah The storm will soon be over. Said I believe the rain will go away. I believe <laughs> you can make it through. Said it's already done. You just got to believe it's already done. <laughs> Said it's already done. One more time. It's already done. Oh. Said it's already done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. 
We thank you for your presence. Hallelujah. And we thank you for hearts that are aware of your presence this morning. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, have your way. Continue to have your way in us today. We don't want you just involved in the worship, but we want you involved in the word and in our lives. Holy Spirit, have your way today. May we lean into you a little more this morning. Hallelujah. May we open our hearts a little more to you this morning. Holy Spirit, have your way. Set free and deliver. Convict, rebuke. Affirm and revive. Ah, birth. Birth in this atmosphere. Let there be new beginnings, even in this worship this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Change mindsets. Soften our hearts. As we make ourselves available to you this morning, Holy Spirit, have your way. Saturate, consume, overtake, capture, control, seize as you see fit. We're available. Hallelujah. As we lift our hands to you this morning, even those virtually, make yourselves available to the Holy Spirit this morning. And let him minister to you. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Fill us. Fill us afresh. Fill our hearts, Holy Spirit. presence this morning. If you have your Bibles, Romans, Romans the eighth chapter. Woo, thank you, Holy Ghost. Yes. Romans the eighth chapter, and if you are able, amen, stand for the reading of God's word. chapter. This is a topical message, but we're going to look at some other scriptures today, but th if I could just pick one, this is the one I would pick. But I encourage you to take some notes. Take some notes. Take some notes this morning. And as you know, in this house, we got an open floor. You can talk back to me. I have sessions in the middle of my sermon. That's all right with me. Romans, the 8th chapter. Go down to the 12th verse. Romans 8, 12. If you got to say, man. If you don't say, hold on. Okay. Romans, the 8th chapter, the 12th verse. I'm reading initially from the King James Version. It says, therefore, brethren, we are debtors to the flesh. To live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall what? Die, die. But if ye do the, uh-huh, uh-huh, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall what? Live, 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 live. I really pray that some of you listen and are transparent as the word of God goes forth today. The title of our message 
is relapse. You know, you're seated in the presence. Relapse, relapse, R-E-L-A-P-S-E, relapse. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Give it up to our music ministry that has poured out. Listen, y'all can't be singing Baptist songs like that and expect me to act right. That ain't fair. That, that, that's, that's home for me. I can just hear my daddy singing that in my ear. I can hear him. I can hear him. So just to get a few of you caught up and if you got any anybody on the live feed that, that may not know what we're dealing with, we have been dealing with fulfilling the mission, and that mission is discipleship. That mission is, is discipleship. This is probably, what, our seventh, eighth week? And I think the Holy Spirit is still speaking. I think he is still speaking. Has this been blessing you? Has this been encouraging you? Amen. Has it been challenging you? Okay. Okay, good, good. Because I don't know, I don't really know if we're going to go anywhere else this summer. I really don't know. I'm going to keep following the Holy Spirit. Uh, Jesus said, make disciples, right? That's, that's what he said. Uh, and so we got this amazing book the four chair discipleship um, and he talked about the seeker we talked about that a couple Sundays ago the seeker and that's that's that person that's inquisitive that's that outreach evangelism uh, uh, opportunity and then the seeker becomes a believer the seeker becomes a believer and they're a babe in Christ we talked about that we talked about them being a babe in Christ and how we must, as disciplers, we must nurture that new believer because we can't leave them to themselves, teach them how to walk, talk, and things of that nature. And then last Sunday, we dealt with the worker, which blessed my entire soul as we learned that G Jesus doesn't pick perfect people, but he picks those that are imperfect, right? He picks those that are imperfect, that may have some issues, so make yourself available, uh, uh, accept those difficult requests, and know that perfection is not a requirement. But there's something I said last week, and I hope y'all was paying attention. I said a lot of Christians don't make it past chair three, and it's true. Most Christians in the church are between believer and worker. It's very few disciple makers. Y'all know I ain't lying because some of y'all can sit here and say, I need to be discipled, but I've been in church all my life. And I don't know how to disciple somebody else. Am I making sense this morning? Talk back to me, Mount Hebron. Talk back to me. Am I making sense? Right, right. So, so that's why I want, I, the Holy Spirit said, slow down with worker. Slow down with worker. So we talked about how you don't have to be perfect. And then Wednesday, Wednesday, who, who watched the live, live feed or who watched the live feed on Wednesday? You did oh, awesome. Did it bless you? None of y'all. You watched it? All of you, who you watched it? If you didn't watch it, go back and watch it. Because when you are working, you got to know how to deal with opposition. It, it, one, one of the things that, that I got to share from the Bible study that, that got my whole life together is that you are already defeated if you go out to work and you're impatient. You might as well not have even started if you're going to be discouraged by setbacks. You have to have patience. And he said in the scripture, and it's Hebrews 10, 32 through 39, if you want to read it for yourself. But he said, you are in need of patience. That's what the scripture said. You are in need of patience. So after you have done the will of God, you can receive your promise. And there are some people that want to be workers, ain't got no patience. Go back. Go back and develop, <laughs> grow, right? But it talked about it talked about how the need of the the worker, uh, the worker or the Christian to be able to deal with opposition and still go forward. And those points were: remember how the gospel has changed your life. Do the will of God in the present, and look forward to the promise in the future. You can find those three points in the scripture. So today we're still on worker. And today I believe I am ministering one of the most critical part of the worker. And that is how to walk in the spirit. Some of y'all going to change your channel, but some of y'all going to zoom right on in. 
Because I believe, I believe that some of you, your life can be changed right here in the next few minutes from the word that God has for you. You know, I don't say that a lot. I don't talk sideways. But I believe if you allow the word to penetrate your heart, that this message can show you the root of your issue and why a lot of people don't make it past worker. Why I almost quit pastoring. Okay, so we've seen it so many times, right? The believer becomes the worker. They come to Christ. They begin to grow. They, oh, they're ready to be used by God, and they want to do anything. Don't matter. They'll paint. They'll preach. They'll, they'll serve on this board. They'll serve. They just want to be used by God because they're excited about this newfound relationship. They, 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 they're willing to assist. They're willing to help. They, they're, they're bold about their faith. They're evangelizing to their relatives. Their relatives are calling them crazy. Uh, 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 their, their co-workers are calling them Jesus freak. They are bold in the faith. Am I talking about who you used to be? They are bold in the faith. Come on, can we just be real? No sugar coat. No sugar coat today, okay? Gloves off. I want deliverance today. They, 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 they carry in their Bible. They're reading their word every chance they get. You're not going to mess up their devotional time. You're going to have to catch them after. If it's scheduled on a Sunday, I can't come during this time because I got to be at church. Bible study is at 7. I'm not missing. And then... There is that great decline where they hit a wall because of what? Opposition? Because of relational conflict or discouragement? They take their eyes off of the one who brought them to life and they begin to treat God based on how his people treat them. Talk to me in this house. Am I making sense, Reggie? And they, they, next thing you know, they miss one Sunday. They come back the next. They miss two Sundays. You don't see them. They miss four Sundays. You calling them, they short with you. Can, can I tell the truth, Kiki? Then, then it's, it's, not, it's not the life, though, that they want to live. Catch that. It's not the life they want to live, but something else more powerful is controlling them. If they could have it their way, they wouldn't live this former life of destruction. But they can't not control themselves. I hope I'm making sense. Then, then, then there's always someone who's willing to invite them back into their addiction. Just as well as there's someone who's willing to help them from their addiction. And so they're still connected to the wrong people, places, and things. And it hurts the ones they love. Because they know they are better than their addiction, but the person they love don't see it. You see a lot of Christians who follow this same progress, the same process of, of, of what are you relaxing to? You, well, you, you know that when you came into Christianity, you came in by the Spirit. And when you're excited and zealous for God, it is because this spirit has made you alive. As I said before, in the believer, you are physically alive when you're born, but you are spiritually, yeah, 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 you're spiritually dead. And so, 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 so they are, they are born and born again and made alive by the spirit, but because of discouragement, they relapse from the spirit back to the flesh. They relapsed because that was what they were supposed to come out of when you became a Christian. <laughs> oh, okay, let's, let's, let's look at some scriptures. Let's look at some scriptures to show you. Go to Romans, the seventh chapter. Romans, the seventh chapter. Go to the 18th verse. Romans, the seventh. This will help somebody that's really fighting for their relationship with God. That struggles day in and day out. I, I promise, I promise you this will change your life today. Romans, the seventh chapter, go to the 18th verse. Paul was, Paul was talking about his inner turmoil between the law and the spirit, his flesh and the spirit. And in verse 18, he says, for I know that where in me 
dwelleth. Huh? He says, I know that inside of me, in my flesh, there is no good thing. So when you are born again, but go back to the flesh, you are going back to not a good thing. I know that ain't good English, but that's the way I wanted to say it. You're going back to something that's going to destroy you. You're going back to something that is going to harm you. He says here, for to me, for to will is present with me. Meaning the want to do what's right is present. But to perform that which is good, I find not. Desire is not enough. Mm. Knowledge is not enough. Am I making sense? Desire is not enough. Conviction is not enough. He says here, go down, go down to the uh, 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 24th verse of that chapter. Yeah, verse 24. He says, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall what? From what? The body of this what? Death. A lot of people are burnt out because they're operating from this thing that ain't no good. A lot of people walk away from the faith because they started operating in their flesh. They relapsed. Am I making sense? They started off in the spirit. But, but, but they went back to what was comfortable. They went back to what they could control. I hope somebody is hearing me this morning. Y'all know I'm talking good. I'm, ta I'm preaching better than y'all talking. They went back to what they could control because they said, I, I don't want to suffer like this. But what you don't understand, baby, he'll sustain you in your suffering if you walk in the spirit. He says here, I, I, I know that in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. And I ain't talking about just sin. I'm talking about your ideas. Your plans. If it ain't filtered by God, it's going to hurt. Look, look at, okay, let, let me just, for a minute, let's just have a real moment. Look at what your flesh has done to you in your life. I'm giving you time. What has your flesh profited you? Nothing. There's a scripture that says that. That's why I use that word. But it says here in John, John, the sixth chapter, the 63rd verse. You ain't got to turn to it, but I'll read it. You can write it down. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. Look, listen to it in the NLT. It says the spirit alone gives eternal life. But human effort accomplishes nothing. See, when you move, when you relapse from walking in the spirit to walking into human effort, you are now trying to do a divine assignment in your own strength. Am I talking good? You are trying to do kingdom work with fleshly resources. It's not going to work. It's like trying to put water in the gas tank of a car. It's not going to work. I'm trying to help somebody this morning to get out of that sluggish place. You got to get out of yourself. You got to get out of your flesh. You got to get out of your head. You got to get out of your emotions. If you really want to be a worker, if you really want to do kingdom work, you got, you got to go to rehab. You got to, you got to go to rehab. Uh, Philippians 3 and 3 and 3. I'm, I'm reading another one. For, he says here in the NLT, for we worship by the spirit of God are the ones who are truly circumcised. What? We rely on what Jesus Christ has done for us. We put no confidence. We put no confidence in human effort. You got to be real. You know, you can probably pinpoint the moment you stop walking in the spirit. It was the moment when church became an obligation. 
it was the moment, I can help you with another one. It was a moment, this is me preaching to myself. This is the moment, it was the moment when the sacrifice and the suffering you felt wasn't worth the sacrifice. The moment the suffering wasn't worth the sacrifice, you are walking in human effort. Am I talking good? When you start looking at what you're doing for God and saying, God, you owe me more, you're walking in human effort. When you start looking at everybody around you and saying they're not doing enough, you're walking in human effort. I hope I'm helping somebody this morning. Because you're looking at everybody else saying, if they ain't going to get more, I ain't going to get more. But your assignment is not their assignment. You got to do what he told you to do. Drink your cup. Don't pick up your sword. Drink your cup. Don't pick up your sword. Drink your cup. Don't pick up your sword. Jesus said he looked at that cup and said, God, is it possible that this cup can pass from me? Nevertheless, 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 not my will. I don't like how I'm suffering, but nevertheless, I don't like that I'm alone, but nevertheless, I don't like that I'm misunderstood, but nevertheless, not my will. Who am I talking to in here? Who am I talking to? Am I just preaching to me? Who am I talking to in here? Who am I talking to in here? It's got to be more. And the more is in the spirit. It's not in your intellect. It's not in your church history or your church experience. It's in the spirit. Let me tell you something. If the Holy Spirit is the reason why the church was born, how in the world are you going to be a Christian without it? Pentecost was the birth of the church. And the church is still here. Not because of your grandmama and your granddaddy. It's still here because of the Holy Spirit. Kings and queens couldn't stop it. Emperors and Pharisees couldn't stop it. Pharaohs couldn't stop it. Because of the Holy Spirit. Am I making sense in here? Romans 8 and 6. Romans 8 and 6. Go to Romans 8 and 6. He says here, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. What I'm saying is right there in that Bible, ain't it? What he's saying is that the moment you start operating in your own human effort, there's an element of death attached to it. The moment... That I start making decisions independent of God, death is attached to my decision. And I, I've been a Christian long enough to know that that is the truth. That I have made pastoring hard because I tried to use my own human effort. I've made, let, let's make it even more personal. I've made being a Christian harder than what it should have been. Because I tried to do it in good will. Morals, values, principles, those are good, but you still need, somebody say it, you still need, a little louder, you still need, but to be spiritually minded, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be spiritually minded, that means that while I am being a worker, I can still have life while being exhaust, exhausted. I can still have peace while going through a storm because something greater than me is sustaining me. But I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. Go to Galatians 3 and 2. 
Go to Galatians. I told you it was a topical message. This ain't my, this ain't my one, two. This, don't, this ain't how I like to preach, but this is how it is today. <laughs> Listen, man, if this, if this is blessing you, don't play around. Write these scriptures down so you can go back and meditate and pray. Because I'm, I'm, I'm giving you some very simple instructions once we get done. Galatians 3. Go to Galatians 3. Uh-huh. Matter of fact. Wait a second. Wait a second. I got to pull up something. Hold up, live feed. Live feed, is this blessing y'all today? Y'all say something on that live feed. Let me know this blessing some of y'all today. So many, so many Christians has walked away from the faith. And it's their fault. Wasn't the people, even if the people treated them wrong, if you was walking in the spirit, you would have life and peace. Even if people misused you, if you was walking in the spirit, you would have had life and peace. But because you're operating in human effort, you can't handle that attack. Look, 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 look. I'm reading from the NLT, Galatians 3, verse 2 is my, my scripture that I'm getting to. But he says here, O foolish Galatians, who has cast an evil spell on you? For the meaning of Christ, Jesus Christ's death was made as clear to you as if ye had, you had seen a picture of his death on the cross. Let me ask you this question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by obeying the law of Moses? Of course not. You received the Spirit because you believed the message you heard about Christ. I'm going to stop right there. The, Spirit, the Holy Spirit is not someone you earn. The Holy Spirit is not someone you work for. That's why you can be a ratchet even even after you get saved and still can feel conviction because the Holy Spirit is not earned. I had to tell my daughter this morning. I said, baby, I'm preaching a heavy message this morning. She said, oh, I want to hear it. I said, okay. She's like, I don't want to do children's church because I feel like I need, I need to hear this. I said, okay, good. I said, I said, nice, so I need you to pray for daddy. And she said, okay. But I could tell the way she said, okay. She was like, mm, I don't know if I should be praying for this. <laughs> I, said, I said, so let me ask you this. Who is the Holy Spirit? And he said, she's the third of the Trinity, right? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I said, so he's God, right? She said, yes. I said, where is he? Is he in me? She said, yes. I said, is he in you? She said, yes. I said, so is he less God in you and more God in me? She said, no. I said, that's right. So you got the same power I got if you submit. <laughs> But you have the Holy Spirit because you believe. I'm going to tell you right now, as a Christian, when you stop believing, you, start exper you stop experiencing his power. <sighs> Y'all know what I'm saying. When you stop praying for his interference, when you stop believing that he can carry you, when you stop believing that he can sustain you, you start operating in human flesh. That's when the drinking comes in. That's when the sex comes in. That's when the weed comes in. That's when the kicking it comes in. That's when the pointless lifestyle comes in. Oh, I ain't talking to nobody. Okay. I got all these people. All they do is pray and fast. No, you have stopped believing even as a Christian. You stopped believing as a Christian. Let the Holy Spirit tell us the last time you talked to him and asked for advice, for support, for aid. When you believe in something, you reach out to it. Huh? Huh? When you believe, I don't go to that medicine cabinet because that medicine is just sitting in there. I believe what it can do when I'm sick. So I go in there and I get the best brand because I believe. I believe it in the midst of my affliction that whatever's in that cabinet, my wife, y'all know she's the nurse, whatever she tells me to get, When you stop believing, you stop experiencing. It's not that he's not there. You just stop experiencing. Huh? The same goes in the natural. My wife didn't, if my wife didn't believe that I really loved her, we would have a problem. If she didn't believe I loved her, she would have a snappy attitude on everything I say. Hmm. Going where? 
But because she believes, she can experience my love. Am I making sense? You receive the Holy Spirit because of your belief. You experience the Holy Spirit because of your belief. Stop believing, you stop experiencing. Started with the Holy Spirit, relapse, right? He says here in the text, go to Romans 8, 12 through 13. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I think y'all got the message. I think y'all got the message this morning. I, somebody got it. I hope somebody's listening. Huh? Yeah, Romans 8, 8, 12, and 13. Oh, I'm over here looking at my Bible. It's still on Galatians. This going to bless you. This going to bless you, I promise. I'm almost done, but this going to bless you. Romans 8, 12, 13. He says here, uh, in, the, in the King James Version, he says, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors. And if you really want to, you know, study some more in the Holy Spirit, read Romans 8. Romans 8 is a good book. To, yes. And, and if you want to go a little longer, go back to chapter 7 when he talks about the flesh. And then come to verse 8 when he talks about deliverance. Chapter 8. So, so he says here, look at 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For we live after the flesh. Ye shall what? Die. die. Ye shall die. Ye shall die. Right? 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 But, but, but if ye through the spirit do what? Mortify, spiritual rehab, the deeds of the ye shall Ah, see, when the person has to go back to rehab, they realize that there's something in their mind that needs to be removed, corrected. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Even when they come out of rehab, it doesn't mean that the issue is not there. Come here, Rich. 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 Both of y'all, y'all got the same name. That's perfect, I guess. It doesn't mean that the issue is not there. What it means is that they fed the right mindset so that the habit or the addiction no longer has control. But they still have to have a accountability partner. Come on, come on. They got to have an accountability partner because if they get connected to the wrong people, mm, It'll arise or awaken that addiction. Am I making sense? He, said, he says here, he says here in the text, Paul said, he says, if you live by the flesh, you will die. Right? He says here, but if through the spirit you mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. So you're going to be my spirit. You're going to be my flesh. Right? I ain't drink none of this. So he said what I have to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Yeah. Now the flesh may ask for some. Oh, I need to cut off. Now, let's just say that was food. Which one's going to be stronger? The one you feed. He still exists. He's still here. He's me. So my issue's still present, but it doesn't have the power because I've been mortifying my flesh. And so now, when, when my flesh sees something, see something, Rick. Ooh, that look good. Though. You're telling me that look good, right? But the Holy Spirit that I've been feeding says, no, we got to mortify. It pulls me away. And now I start living on the Spirit. And the more I li- lean on the Spirit, the more I weaken. Hey, but it's not the Holy Spirit that makes the initial decision. You take.
take responsibility. He doesn't take you. Say, Come over here. Sit down. No. Holy Spirit. Help me. Help me. I don't want to. I don't want to look at pornography. Help me. I don't want to drink. Help me. I don't want to commit adultery. Help me. I don't want to watch TV. I want to pray. Help me. I don't want to eat my food. I want to fast. Help me. I can't do it by myself. I can't do it by myself. Help me, Holy Spirit. And the more you lean on him here, he'll be your helper. He'll be your paraclete. He'll be your substance. He'll be your strength. But you can't do it by your... And I mean, we... We, we need to talk about everything. What time should I go to bed tonight? What time you want me to wake up? Should I go there first or should I go to the, go to the church first? Then go to the hospital? Okay. Should I, should I call Rich today? See how he's doing? Okay, I'll call him. Okay. You, want, you said sit down? Okay, sit down, sit down. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Okay. Yes, Lord. Your will be done. Talk to me. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Okay. That's how we do it. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. We, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yes, sir. What school should my kid go to? Okay. Okay. Should I quit my job? Okay. Should I start this business? Not yet? Okay. 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 Talk. Talk to. Okay. I'll talk to them first. Yeah. You, you, you got to include them. In every aspect of your life, he's just not church. He's just not something you feel in worship. He's a part of every aspect of your life. And some people are dying because they have relapsed into their flesh. And they're blaming everybody else. It is their responsibility. be delivered today what are the deeds of your flesh that needs to be mortified what needs to be cut off something's got to die today I, something's got to die today what needs to be killed today what thought process what cravings in your flesh needs to die today what excuses need to die today Today it has to die because it's killing you. It is killing your faith. It is killing your growth. It is killing your development. And it's in you. So you got to have what's in you. Greater is he to overcome. What needs to die? What needs to die today? What needs to be cut off today? Today. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't put off for tomorrow. What you can do today? What, 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 needs to, what needs to be confronted today? What needs to be put in the grave today? Today. No relapse. You can't, you can't write this down. You can't fix the old you. You have to grow the new you. You can't fix the old you. If you could fix it, it would have been fixed. Because somebody that's struggling with addiction, if they could have been free, some of them would have been free. But they have to grow the new you. You can't put new wine, Dr. Yvonne, in old wine skins. I am preaching deliverance this morning. If you would only look at your flesh and see what has kept you from growing, you could be free right now. The Holy Spirit could do a work right now. You want to know why you feel so comfortable out of God's will? Because your flesh has been in control for so long, you can't even feel the Holy Spirit. Your flesh has been the governor of your life for so long, you don't even know what conviction feels like. I know what I'm talking about because I lived it. It's not a place you want to be. Cut it off. He says here, you don't... Cut off these deeds 
because of you're informed. You don't these these don't cut off because you're aware. You have to cut them off by the spirit. You have to cut them off by the spirit. So what does that mean? That means that you lean, you pray, you seek, you pursue, you press into the Holy Spirit. You talk to him. You know you can talk to him just how you talk to Jesus, but y'all don't want to talk to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, get in your word. Get in your word. Study your issue. If it's your flesh, if it's lust, you sleeping around, study your issue. If you got an atheist approach when you used to be a Christian, study your issue. You using alcohol and drugs to, 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 to escape reality, study your issue. That the Holy Spirit can give you the word and also empower the word. That you may what? Live. 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 Because for some of us, we haven't experienced it yet because our flesh has been too dominant. Oh, if you're going to be a worker, you need a spirit. Because as soon, if you ain't got a spirit, as soon, as soon as somebody come at you sideways, you out the door. Y'all know I, I'm sorry, y'all can be seated. Y'all know I ain't lying. As soon as something don't go right, you quit. Relapse. Relapse. Can't change the old you. You have to grow the new you. You've got to deal with your impulses. You got to deal with your fleshly desires and habits that pull you away from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go to Galatians 5 and I'm done. I'm done. I'm, I'm done. Because I know I probably didn't preach too long. But y'all see why I said this can deliver somebody today? You see what I'm saying? Today. It's just a choice you got to make. You ain't got to wait for me to lay hands on you. You ain't got to wait for somebody to prophesy over you. You ain't got to wait for somebody to put oil on you. You ain't All you got to do is say, I want to do what this word say, Holy Spirit, here I am. All you got to do, let's go back to last week. Be available. Whatever you want to do with me. Look at, look at Galatians 5. Galatians 5. Now, now you see here, you can't operate in the flesh and the spirit. That's why the deeds of the flesh have to be cut off. You can't, you're either operating in the spirit or you're operating in the flesh. You can't do this. Now, you can go back and forth, but you can't operate in both at the same time. But it said, the Bible says a double-minded man. Right, right, right. So, so look, look here, look here, and then, then and you can take this home and read it for yourself. But Galatians 5, look at Galatians 5, 16. Galatians 5, 16. You know, this is the reason why church is the way it is. Like, you know, some people be blaming the praise team and the pastor. Look, some of y'all been walking in y'all flesh all week. Y'all been walking in y'all flesh all week. You ain't prayed. And then here we come with the spirit. Do you, what do you think two hours is going to do? How many hours is in a week? Somebody add, somebody add that up for me. Somebody add that up. It's what, 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 24 hours a day? 24 times, do 24 times six. Huh? 184 hours compared to two hours. What's going to win? 184 hours. That's what you said? 184 hours. And then church is the only place we come wondering when we're going to leave. I lie. How long? Where your church at? Oh, 271. Oh, okay. How long y'all have service for? I said, um, I mean, it just depends on the Holy Spirit. I don't know what to tell you. Hey, to be honest, I, I don't even know what time we get out of church no more. I don't even look at the clock. But you see what I'm saying? We spend 184 hours doing God knows what. And then we come here ready to leave. You, <laughs> Y'all know I ain't lying? No. 
No, 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 no. That's, I bet you. That's why. That's why when we when we fast as a church, church is uncontrollable, isn't it? Because why? We have spent time with the Holy Spirit privately. So publicly there's an explosion. Publicly there's agreement. Publicly there's communion. Why? Because there's only one Holy Ghost, Sister Norland. And if I've been spending time with the one Holy Ghost that you've been spending time with, something you say going to gonna bounce off of something he said to me. And I'm going to throw my towel at you and say, girl, you better say it because the Holy Spirit told me the same thing. And then we're going to shuffle, shimmy. Worship, cry, thank God, believe it. Because we got communion. But if you've been in the spirit and I've been on Instagram all day, you're going to say something. But all I got is the Migos song in my head. All I got is Polo G in my head. All I got is a TikTok dance. So what you say don't matter to me because I ain't been talking to who am I making sense in here. But if we spend time with the Holy Ghost, we can see the church we're supposed to be. And we got to go easy on the praise team and the musicians and the, pra- and the preachers sometimes. It ain't their fault. Huh? I'm not, and I'm not saying that we don't need to spend time with God, but I'm just, you get what I'm saying. Huh? 184 hours. It says here, come on, we're going to be disciples, y'all. This is discipleship. Galatians 5.16, y'all there? I'm not going to read it all. I'm just going to read a few key scriptures, and then we're going to have all to call. He says, this I say then. What does he say? Walk in the Spirit. And ye shall not, what? You see what he's saying? If you do one, you can't do the other. If you do one, you can't do the other. So if there's anybody in here that wants to walk in the Spirit, the first thing you got to do is deal with your fleshly deeds and habits. Walk, walk means how you live, how you behave. Go down to verse 18. I'm, all, I'm, I'm about to be done. But if ye be led of the Spirit, means to bring where have I went that the Holy Spirit brought me. Led, meaning that I take time to sit and commune and get, get direction from him before I act. Now listen, you're going to have some error because you're human. We don't have the privilege that Adam had to walk in his presence all day and all night. That's why we, in the fallen state that we're in, in this dispensation of grace, have to fast and pray and work to be sensitive to his presence. So you may say, Pastor, I I, want to be led. Are you giving up enough so your flesh is weak and your spirit is strong? Pastor, I don't understand. I don't hear. I put up that post today. Sometimes your very own flesh gets in the way of the desires and the answers you desperately need. Because you won't starve your flesh. For those of us that are out of the clubs and we ain't church doing this and doing that crazy stuff, but we still going home and doing nothing. Looking at the same post from two hours ago. You you accidentally hit the top and started over. And went back to where you was. I ain't saying you shouldn't scroll and be on your phone. But if you haven't spent time with the. Put it down. He said you got to be led. I'm almost done. You got to walk in the spirit. You got to be led. Look look at verse 22. But the fruit of the spirit, notice it's not plural. Fruit, because there's only one Holy Ghost. And you should have some love, some joy, some peace, some long suffering. Uh Uh-huh. Y'all with me? Verse 25 says, if we live in the spirit. And we shall walk in the spirit. Huh? Walk in the spirit. Be led by the spirit. Produce the fruit of the spirit. Live in the spirit. 
right there. But in order to do that, you've got to cut off the deeds of the flesh. Is that good teaching? Now, I want to clarify something. Just because you have a strong connection with the Holy Spirit don't mean that you won't relapse sometimes. I'm not here. I'm not here. Oh, can you throw my towel back at me? I'm not here to make y'all super Christians. What? Oh, nothing ever bothers me. I'm, oh, I'll never get discouraged. But I'm saying your relapse will be different. Maybe it won't be as long. Huh? Maybe, maybe it'll come already with it conviction. Maybe you don't even need nobody else to help you rehab. You just talk with the Holy Spirit and get back to where you were because y'all have a relationship. Huh? You are in flesh. Until we get to heaven, we're going to struggle with it. But your struggle should be different after some time. Remember in Hebrews, I taught, he said, by now y'all should be teachers. There should be growth. Some of y'all have grown. Kiki, I remember you told me, customers come at you sideways, you used to be ready to go. And now you say, ma'am, it's above me now. Speak to my manager. It's better than cussing them out. Huh? I've seen some of y'all grow. What? Seen Rich. Where Rich at? Where my man? Man, what? He used to come in here and say two words during service. Two words during service. Now, if you come here on one side, he might preach. He'll preach and exhort, and then he'll go over there and get on his face. He ain't get that because of human effort. You can't fix the old you. You have to grow the new you. And so my prayer today is that some of you will believe in the power of the Holy Spirit to put to death some things in your flesh that, that will hinder and that has hindered your walk with God. The altar is now open. You can come as you feel free, as you feel led by the Spirit. I don't want to make anybody come. I'm not trying to have an emotional moment. But deliverance is in your decision. And in your belief in the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you don't need to come, and you feel like you're you in good standing with the Holy Spirit, then intercede for somebody else. Even those on the live today. If there's one, as we all stand to our feet, if there's one, if there's one, and you know there's some stuff that need to die so that you can walk in the spirit. Come today. Come to him. Come get on this altar and cry out to the Holy Spirit. We don't have to know what's going on. But I don't want you to sit there living in death when you should be living in life. Hmm. Yeah, you relapse. But let's rehab. Let's get you back to God. Let's cut off some things by the power of the Holy Spirit. Huh? I've seen them take addictions out of people's life. I've seen them heal people of traumatic past and abuse. I've seen him restore hearts that were crushed. I've seen him raise up those who felt insignificant with low self-esteem. Walking in confidence. I've seen him take the shy and make them bold. I've seen him take the wretched and make them saved. I've seen him put life into something that was dead that we never saw there. So I ask, once again, the altar is open. Come down. Come down. If nothing else, let me just touch and agree with your decision that something needs to die. If there's one, even on the live feed, if there's one, the altar is open. The altar is open. The altar is open. Yes, 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 yes. This is a decision to live. This is a decision to live. This is a decision to live. Hallelujah. You all right, mother? Hallelujah. 
Who else? Who else? Who else? I don't want to manipulate. I don't want to. But if you want it, deliverance is today. Deliverance is today. Who else? Who else? <laughs> Who else? Who else? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. He told me. He told me. He told me. I told you, Naya. I told you. I told you. He told me. He told me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, please, towards your brother, your sister today. God, I thank you for this spiritual rehab today. Right here at this altar, God. They're choosing to live and not die. There's something that needs to be removed a habit, a mindset, an impulse, a craving. But today, by the power of your spirit, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in these lively temples today. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. They give you access. And by your power, the same power that hovered over chaos and established order in Genesis is the same power that will hover over your chaos and establish order in the mighty name of Jesus, Holy Spirit. We honor you, we reverence you, and we welcome you to disrupt our lives. Holy Spirit, we honor and we reverence you and welcome you to interrupt our programs and disrupt our lives and remove that deed, that, that act of the flesh that it be put to death by your power. For your word says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God by the pulling down of strongholds. Holy Spirit do it today in their hearts as they believe in your power today. Holy Spirit, I stand in great faith today that you're doing a new thing through your sons and your daughters. Oh, God, and as that flesh is dying, that their spirits are becoming lighter. As that flesh is dying, the spirit in them is getting more control, even right now. That you will empower, that you will liberate, that you will set free in only a way that you can. Hallelujah. That today they yield. Today. God, do what they don't think is possible. Because sometimes it's hard to believe in the miracle for yourself. Today they're not going to fix the old. No, no. We feed the spirit today. Holy Spirit moving their minds, moving their hearts, moving their finances, moving their marriages, moving their emotions. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way, oh. have your way Holy Spirit. The flesh profiteth nothing, but in the spirit there is life. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Cry out to the Holy Spirit. He's been waiting for this conversation with you. He's been waiting for this conversation with you. He's ready to rehab and make you new. So Father, I thank you. I thank you right now. I thank you right now, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. You don't have to feel anything. Just believe. You don't have to feel anything. Just believe. Just believe in his power. Believe in his existence. And that he's alive in you. Holy Ghost, I thank you. Thank you. So now the flesh... The flesh has to die. Let the fear die. Let the excuses die. Let the cravings die. Let the impulses die. Let the lying die. Let the bitterness die. Let the anger die. Let the hate die. In the name of Jesus. Let that sin be cut off today by the power of your spirit and birth the worker, birth the disciple, birth the follower of Jesus Christ. He says, those that are in Christ are a new creature. Behold, old things have passed away. It is in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Rehabilitate God. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Revive God. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Resuscitate God. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. And my brothers and sisters say amen. Stay right there. If he's not done talking to you, and if you're not done talking with him, don't move. Don't move. For what he is speaking in this moment has eternal weight. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come blood this place. Your glory.
and wait give me you I hope I'm not too late Lord give me you Lord give me you Lord give me you Lord give me you give me you can wait give me you I hope I'm not too late Lord give me you Lord give me you Lord give me you Lord give me you give me you I'm not too late, Lord, give me you, Lord, give me you, Lord, give me you, Lord, give me you, Holy Spirit, you are welcome, come. 
As we get ready to release those who need to be released, I think today we learned it's not a question whether we have the Holy Spirit, but the question is, does the Holy Spirit have us? And we see that when he doesn't have us, we're burnt out, we're discouraged. Everything seems impossible. I'm a witness that if he has you, he'll show you how to love your spouse. He'll show you how to love your children. He'll show you how to love your neighbor. He'll show you how to love yourself. For some of us, we've lived so long with the, with, in human effort. That now it's time to draw nearer. Can you play that again, please? Draw me nearer. So, we, uh, by the grace of God, we own this building. So, at this moment, I just want to give blessing to anybody that needs to leave. But for those of you that are in His presence, in His community, I don't want you to—I don't want you to leave. I don't have nowhere else that I have to be. I'll stay here to nine o'clock if you stay here to nine o'clock talking to the Holy Spirit. But go home and think about what the Holy Spirit is. I, I, I cry so hard and I worship so hard because as wretched as I am, he still gives me a word for his people. And I know this was a word for the house. It was a word for the listeners. It was a word for you. It was a word for me. So go home. Go home and pray. Go home and talk about it. Go home and seek the Holy Spirit for guidance and direction to live in the new, to live in the fullness. This is what he meant when he said that he came that we may have Flesh doesn't give you abundance. So Holy Spirit, thank you for being so kind to us today. I thank you for every death of the flesh.
Ooh. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Holy Spirit, help us to feed our spirit that we may starve our flesh and walk in the life and peace that you have promised. I don't need to ask you to fill us because I think we already feel. You have filled. <laughs> and may we continue to flow and operate in that as we go throughout this week. Draw this church closer to you, oh God. And help us to live as a church. Walk as a church in the spirit. So that discouragement and exhaustion won't overtake us. As we do the work you have called us to do. I thank you, God. I thank you for Mount Hebron. I thank you for your bride. I love your church, God. Please continue to give me words that will edify and build up your sons and your daughters. That I would be the under-shepherd you would have me to be. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. If he's still ministering, feel free to, to stay seated.